This is Joshua Littrell. Thank you so much for joining us today here on the Veterans for Cannabis podcast. It's going to be an interesting day. Thanks for sticking with us and should get a, get a lot of information out to you all today. It will just be me in the first segment, which is going to be really great, I think. Uh, it's something a little different, but I think the key that we want to really focus on today is getting information out to you all. I thought I would change it up a little bit for a couple of segments this month to bring legitimate information to you all, the listeners. Everybody out in the world who is trying to figure out really what's going on in the cannabis industry, whether it's medical cannabis or if it's industrial hemp um, or if it's science based behind some of the the studies that are going on. So that's what today's segment is going to be. Today's segment will be updates in cannabis our world of cannabis, the interesting space that we live in. So without any further ado, first and foremost, I'll bring you all up to date and up to speed on where I'm at geographically located in the country today. Today, I'm actually working, I think, just like most of you all are, uh, from home here in Warner Robins, Georgia. As many of the listeners know, you guys know that my wife is active duty Air Force. So um, we're here in, in at Robins Air Force Base. And unfortunately, we have a ban on any travel over 30 miles until June 30th. So it's it's thrown a real wrench into our plans on Veterans for Cannabis side uh, from our uh, industrial hemp um, grow and production standpoint, because now we can't move around the state in Georgia and around throughout the country uh, legally without potentially putting my wife into a bind and not following the orders of uh, the command's uh, orders of, you know, don't travel outside a 30 mile radius. So it's been a struggle. Uh, I'll be honest. And I think most of you all are in very similar situations where with COVID-19, we've all been on this lockdown. It's been an absolutely unprecedented time. And I swear I will not use that phrase for the rest of these segments that we have going on because it's so overused at this point in time. And, you know, what they say about how we're all in this together. Oh, it's so frustrating to me. And I know it may sound crazy and and I hope I don't upset a lot of you all because, yes, we are all going through this, but we don't need the advertisement. We don't need to uh, every single commercial remind us that we're all in this together. It's so frustrating. And uh, I think that'll be my 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 start on my tangent (laughs) of getting into this. So without any further ado. Let's get into some really interesting uh, things that are going into effect pretty soon. A lot of really great laws have been updated over the past year to around the country. And I want to first start in New York City uh, and the state of New York, where, uh, as you all know, it's been hit tremendously hard with COVID-19. And one of the things that they are doing now is trying to find new employees that want to be hired for different jobs and different um, things that may be available for them. People need jobs. We need careers. We need to continue to press forward with our lives and take care of people, whether it's uh, packing meat, um, you know, it's distribution of uh, products bought on Amazon, or if it's those wonderful people who are working at the Kroger's, at the Publix, at the, you know, the Piggly Wigglies, the local stores where you're getting your food at and your sustenance at. That's a huge deal. So a huge, 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 wonderful point that's taking uh, effect really soon um, is that New York City is going to put a ban on testing for cannabis for job applicants. I'm going to take a moment on that one and let you all really soak that in because this is absolutely unprecedented. And it's a great pet precedent to set because we have probably the largest employer in the in the country as far as cities go um, in New York City, where they have the largest population. Now they are no longer going to test people for cannabis when they're going into a potential job. 
that's groundbreaking, and it's extremely groundbreaking from our cannabis standpoint. So that's a huge, huge, huge point that we've all got to be really excited about. Now, what does that mean? It means a whole lot of different things. There's no doubt about it. But I think first and foremost, the thing it means to the majority of us is if you don't live in New York City, it doesn't mean anything, right? Well, actually, that's wrong, and that's wrong because New York City essentially leads the country in – uh, innovation in a lot of manners, and this is a humongous, humongous innovation where now they are not going to test people who are actually going in for their pre-employment uh, job screen, uh, drug screening. So that means a huge, huge bit to you, even though you may think it does not mean anything to you sitting in, in Nebraska right now. It does because that's going to slowly but surely – it's going to penetrate throughout the country. So as of Sunday, New York City's ban on pre-employment marijuana testing for many workers is going to take effect, which is really, really tremendous. And um, this is – I typically don't give dates, but today is uh, 12 May. So as of Sunday, which is what, 17 May, um, we're no longer going to be able to test potential employees for cannabis in their system. So, yeah, you know, doesn't mean a whole lot for us sitting in, in you know, uh, let's just say Arizona right now, but doggone it, it's coming your way. Now, why don't I bring this up? Because without the information, without the education, we can't bring those talking points up to the people in our state who can make these changes. What does that mean to you uh, as well? Um, it means that First and foremost, I think you all know who Veterans for Cannabis is. We are educators above all else, right? If we can't educate you on what's happening in the country, you can't make an informed decision or help inform other people about what's going on either. So secondly, this is a call to action. And what do I mean by that? I mean that you've got to get involved. Now you know that New York City, the largest city in our United States, is not going to test people for cannabis use or the M word, the marijuana word, uh, prior to taking a new job. Um, there are some exceptions with that. Uh, regulators say they won't punish some companies that test for THC even while those rules are still being finalized. So what that means is uh, in the meantime, even though it takes effect on Sunday, it's not going to be fully in effect. So there may be some companies that will continue to test and in the same breath, there are going to be organizations and companies that will test no matter what. And I think you're going to see that across the board. So any of our first responders, they're going to have to be tested. Now, what we've got to do as the listeners of this great Veterans for Cannabis podcast and those listeners who are essentially advocates, we have to get involved in the local community. We've got to start advocating for more thorough testing. And what does that mean? Well, because our first responders, our fire department, our EMTs, our police officers, our active duty military, they cannot have any cannabis in their system. To me, that's personally frustrating. One of the biggest frustrating points of this is that um, you all know that Veterans for Cannabis exists to help you know, eliminate the opioid dependency that the VA essentially throws on us uh, from the Veterans Administration. They push the pills on us veterans. But – that all starts while we're on active duty. The biggest frustrating point to me uh, personally is that, you know, I mentioned earlier my wife's active duty. She can't utilize our own CBD products, our own industrial hemp based products, because she can't potentially have any THC in her system. Now, the regulations are very clear that even CBD is not legal for active duty military members to utilize. And that's because, and this is their reasoning behind it. There is potential for THC to be present in that, that compound, which is technically true but also not true in the same breath because if it is a CBD isolate product where it's been isolated, that molecule of CBD has been isolated down to the individual molecule itself, there's absolutely no THC in that. There's zero chance that there's any THC in that either. However, those men and women – who are in this industry who may not be doing things the way that Veterans for Cannabis does and may be trying to cut corners, we send 
every single batch out for third party testing to an accredited lab. And that's a DEA certified lab that's certified at the federal level too. So it's not just us saying, hey, your product is free from THC. It's a third party analytical laboratory that's been doing this kind of testing, maybe not necessarily in the cannabis industry, but but has been doing testing on heavy metals, pesticides, our food, our water for decades. Uh, the lab in particular that we utilize is Americana Labs. They've been in, in uh, business for 30 years, not Americana itself, but their parent company. So they've been doing testing for 30 years. They know what they're doing. So we can unequivocally say that if we put a product out there that is CBD only, there is absolutely no THC in it. However, the regulations do state that from a, a, an active duty standpoint and a DOD standpoint, Anything that's derived from the cannabis sativa plant is not legal for any active duty member to utilize. So I say all that to give you all the background and the information because you've got to become educated on this. These are talking points that you need to have in your repertoire to be able to bring up and reference at the drop of a hat. When somebody starts saying, oh, no, you know, our first responders should absolutely not have THC in their system. Well, that's actually inaccurate in my in my point of view because they can have trace amounts in it what you and i have to get involved with and what we have to do on an advocacy level is we have to start saying hey let's not worry about trace amounts let's worry about defining what an intoxicated amount is what does that mean well for example think about a DUI or a DWI, depending on what state you're in, driving while intoxicated or driving under the influence, right? We all know that almost every single state has a 0.08% limit for being intoxicated when you're driving, right? So 0.08 and above that, you're intoxicated, you're going to get a DUI, you're going to spend $1,200 to $1,500 going through court, potentially lose your license, potentially lose your job, uh, potentially lose your your life because you drove intoxicated. However, in the same breath, there is not a legal intoxicated limit for THC. So we, you the listener on this Veterans for Cannabis podcast, and me and all of our veterans in our community and our network have to get involved. We've got to become advocates. We have to push so hard to say, hey, Stop saying that no THC can be present because it's actually been proven now that secondhand smoke can show up. Um, there's no doubt about it. And who knows? Um, you can eat a brownie on a, a Friday night, uh, take a week's vacation, and that's still going to be in your system in two weeks later. So that EMT that went to, you know, that's, that's uh, actively on the job in West Virginia went to Colorado for spring break and went snowboarding or skiing and had a brownie and enjoyed themselves. And they should legally be allowed to do that. However, they cannot because when they come home, they're going to test positive for THC and they can't have it in their system right now because their employer can uh, submit a, a random drug uh, test on them and boom, they test positive and they lose their job. So you and I, and all of us in this cannabis industry have to become advocates and have to fight really, really hard for pushing for an intoxication limit on THC. Now, that brings me back to what started this conversation is that as of Sunday coming up, New York City is once again going to ban their pre-employment marijuana testing for many of the workers. So that's huge. It's really, really huge. But that also leaves out a very large portion of the population. And when we think about those who have given their all, I mean, you all know after 9-11, uh, NYCD, NYCD, NYC and uh, NYCFD in New York City Fire Department and New York City police officers uh, were lifted up as heroes, as well they should have been, and they are, and they, they continue to be heroes every single day. But it's absolutely a travesty, in my opinion, that they cannot utilize cannabis, first and foremost, as a medicine, because – it's legal in the state of New York as medicine. So now they're talking about from a recreational standpoint, what what are they what are they supposed to do? They can go out and get blasted on a Friday night, show up to work on Saturday morning, hungover, 
probably still a little bit drunk from the night before and go out and take care of people. But you can't have, uh, you know, enjoy uh, cannabis consumption on a Friday.